Hello everyone, I'm Jason Dowling from the Health and Biosecurity Business Unit of the Commonwealth Scientific and Industrial Research Organization or CSIRO. Uh, thanks to Josh and the other organizers for the opportunity to present um, at the symposium. In this talk, I'll give a brief, a brief background of the CSIRO and our Space Technology Future Science Platform before describing four of our current uh, FSP projects in space life sciences. And I'll wrap up with a quick overview of other capabilities that might be of interest to the audience. So the CSIRO is Australia's national science agency. It was established more than 100 years ago. Our purpose is to solve the greatest challenges through innovative science and technology. And we're really focusing on the issues that matter the most to our quality of life, for the economy and for our environment. Uh, we have more than five and a half thousand staff based across 57 sites around the world, including every state and territory in Australia, as well as in Singapore, Vietnam, Chile, and in the USA. The CSRO delivers more than four and a half billion dollars a year in value to the Australian economy through our science and technology, and we're the largest patent holder in Australia. We work with over 2,800 industry partners and around 150 international partners from more than 80 countries, including the USA. Our research is delivered through CSRO's business units, which span a very large range of scientific fields and several national facilities and collections. All our business units collaborate on space-related R&D. So CSIRO has 75 years of space science heritage. The CSIRO hosts Australia's radio telescope facilities, collectively known as the Australia Telescope National Facility, ATNF, which includes the famous dish at Parks and the Australian Square Kilometre Array Pathfinder in Western Australia. In fact, the invention of Wi-Fi came out of CSIRO's uh, pioneering work in radio astronomy. CSIRO also hosts the Canberra Deep Space Communication Complex, which is one of three stations worldwide that make up NASA's Deep Space Network and is operated by CSIRO on behalf of the Australian government for NASA. CSIRO also provides operational support for the European Space Agency's Deep Space Tracking, tracking Station at New Norcia in Western Australia. CSRO has had world leading capabilities in Earth observation, data analytics, calibration and validation for decades. And this is coordinated by the CSRO Center for Earth Observation. This center will soon become our next national space facility and manages our 10% capacity share of the UK operated Novasar 1 satellite. It's also home to our first CubeSat, which is due to be launched from the International Space Station next year. Our newest space program is the Space Technology Future Science Platform which is led by Dr. Kimberly Clayfield. The Space Technology Future Science Platform, or Space FSP, was established two years ago. The aim of the Space FSP is to build world leading capability and drive cutting edge research within CSIRO in the space domain, generating new innovations that hold the potential to generate significant societal benefits and commercial opportunities and which will help transform the Australian space sector. The Space FSP has initiated 30 research projects to date, leveraging a broad range of CSRO's existing terrestrially focused expertise to space applications. The Space FSP's current areas of research are shown on the slide. Our activities span areas including small satellite technologies, Earth observation, data analytics and applications, communications and tracking, robotics, remote operations and resource utilization, and space life sciences. And we also have an interest in space analog facilities. We're actively looking to collaborate with industry, researchers and international partners to grow these capabilities and develop new operations, uh, new op opportunities, particularly in support of the Australian Space Agency's uh, Moon to Mars initiative. So the uh, Space FSP are funding four projects at um, early um, technical readiness level or TRL stages, um, which focus on improving our understanding of disease mechanisms, disease diagnosis, nutrition, and food packaging to support human performance in space. Importantly, all of these projects have strong terrestrial applications as well. The first project is led by Dr. Andrew Laslett from CSRO Manufacturing and is carried out in collaboration with both Dr. Harold Yanovac at Monash University 
and the Synthetic Biology Future Science Platform at CSIRO. The goals of the project are to establish an all optical paradigm for microgravity research using new devices and novel methodologies to, and to understand human cell physiology and microgravity, focusing on bone forming osteoblast cells. The project is developing an all optical device called the OptoCube in a one unit CubeSat format. This device is capable of light application and light detection to permit the all optical real-time interrogation of cells. Andrew's team hopes to be able to carry out 72 parallel cell-based experiments in miniature wells. Microgravity simulation is done in the laboratory using CSRO's random positioning machine, which is located in Clayton, Victoria, and which is shown on the right-hand side of the slide. This image demonstrates the sensitivity of the camera in the OptoCube. So far, Andrew's team have created multiple prototypes, started adding optogenetic components to human cells and have a functioning random positioning machine in place in the laboratory in Victoria. Over the next 18 months, they'll be putting all of this together and measuring and affecting real-time cellular behavior in the OptoCube and the random positioning machine. The goal at the end of the next 18 months is to have a space-ready version of the OptoCube. The next project is led by Dr. Regine Stockman from CSRO Agriculture and Food. Future long duration space missions face significant challenges in the maintenance of astronaut health. And a critical area is supplying sustainable and adequate nutrition as certain vitamins and nutrients in supplied foods and supplements demonstrate substantial degradation during space flight. To address this issue, Regine's team are aiming to investigate and develop microbial technologies to produce targeted nutrients that astronauts require for long duration space missions. The recently commenced project aims to develop these technologies for the production of essential micronutrient, bioactive and macronutrient rich food fractions, which are suited to the personalized nutritional needs of space travelers. The food production system or biofactory is based on microbes and can provide oxygen, consume CO2 exhaled by humans, and recycle nitrogen-filled waste. The production system will be designed to operate autonomously with all inputs transformed into valuable food fractions, including whole foods from entire biomass. Bioengineering tools will be applied to assure the biosynthetic pathways and improve production yield of the desired components. And co-product streams will be evaluated for other space uses, such as energy or biofertilizer. The Project technical roadmap includes um, three main areas. So the identification and validation of approaches to targeted nutrients as human health countermeasures and microbial production systems. Uh, secondly, the development and scaling methods for continuous production of food fractions within simulated space conditions. And finally, systems integration and design. The opportunities both in space and on Earth arising from this work include a closed cycle food production for proteins and other nutrients, food production systems which are resilient to environmental factors such as temperatures, changes, um, droughts and floods, and sustainable food production in um, pandemic situations. The third project is led by Dr. Peter Watkins from CSRO Agriculture and Food and is focused on space food stability. This project is a collaboration with the Australian Nuclear Science and Technology Organization, otherwise known as ANSTO. Currently, terrestrial food-based uh, terrestrial based food systems are used to meet the nutritional needs of human space missions. And these have a maximum shelf life of, of up to three years. Extended missions such as Moon to Mars may require food supplies that are stable for a longer duration, such as five years. And these will be exposed to space radiation. And at present, there's very little understanding of what effects this radiation may have on food stability, nor knowledge on what suitable interventions and packaging materials could be used to prevent this degradation. For space, in uh, space industries, understanding the impact of cosmic radiation on food systems is important. Uh, the provision of an appropriate food system needs to support the crew's physiological and psychological well-being. But it also needs to be safe and palatable to the crew for the length of the mission. Suitable food packaging materials could mitigate these, um, these risks. So Peter's project plans to identify and develop a suitable food system 
An example system consists of a base such as a potato with typical food components such as fats, proteins, and vitamins. The simple system will be irradiated with the equivalent of space radiation and then undergo storage and, and then undergo further irradiation. Measurements of the components and related irradiation breakdown products will be performed. The product has recently commenced, uh, so its TRL readiness level is um, quite low, but it's expected to be TRL3 by the project conclusion in April 2021. The fourth and final project um, is led by Dr. Uh, Chris Cowlard from CSRO Health and Biosecurity. This project was a six month pilot project involving the development of advanced medical diagnostic capabilities using microRNA biomarkers. And microRNAs are really appealing as biomarkers as they rapidly respond to biological events and they're present in bodily fluids, including blood, urine, saliva, and sweat. So the applications for this technology could include portable and lightweight devices with high sensitivity and specificity. And these could provide minimally invasive monitoring uh, of astronaut health. These results could even be paired with other systems such as on-demand synthesis of targeted therapeutics, for example. For this pilot, an initial experiment was conducted on human bone cells in microgravity using a random positioning machine, incorporating next-gen sequencing and data analysis the study identified approximately 30 microRNAs of importance, including a subset known to play a role in bone cell differentiation and one set with no known association to bone health, which is quite interesting. This pilot project has recently concluded, although Chris's team plan to continue developing the platform for the use of microRNA biomarkers for diagnosing human medical conditions. As with all of these projects, we're seeking potential collaboration, interest and commercialization partners. In addition to the Space FSP projects, four exploratory workshops have also been held. Uh, they were held earlier this year. And they've been really successful in bringing new communities of practice together and identifying promising new areas of opportunity for future investment. These have included biomanufacturing for space, etricultural farming, um, which is extraterrestrial agricultural farming, and task guidance in high latency situations. Um, I have a particular interest in terrestrial space analogues, and we ran a one-day workshop in Adelaide in February. I think Australia's Southern Hemisphere location, infrastructure, scientific facilities, international collaborative networks, and access to extreme environments from the Antarctic to deserts open up some huge opportunities for growth in simulating the environment in space. I think the development of collaborative Australian research analogues could support new space biomedicine and biohealth technologies to optimise human performance in space missions. These projects have highlighted some of CSRO's capability for space medicine and space life sciences. However, there's a lot of additional relevant capabilities, uh, and these include areas such as food and nutrition, precision medicine, theranostics, health surveillance, in vitro diagnostics, radiation shielding, noting that Daniel Liang will be speaking as well at the symposium, um, and additive manufacturing, including surgical grade titanium alloy. So an example, um, is shown on the right hand side of the screen of a 3D printed sternum, which was um, implanted into a, uh, a patient who'd had surgery for cancer. In addition, we have strong capabilities in artificial intelligence and machine learning, including computer vision, natural language processing and bioinformatics. Uh, my team based in Brisbane is mainly focused on medical Im imaging um, analysis for disease diagnosis and treatment planning. Um, and I've just put an example of cardiac segmentation at the bottom of the slide. Um, this is segmentation of, uh, of different uh, areas of the heart from a CT scan. Um, we also have a new collaboration with the University of, Queen, uh, University of Canberra and the Queensland University of Technology, which is focused on new CMUT ultrasound technologies for autonomous diagnosis in remote and extreme environments, including space. In summary, CSRO is Australia's national science agency and we've been involved in space for um, a long time, to 75 years. We're actively looking to collaborate with industry, researchers and international partners to grow our space life sciences capabilities and to develop new opportunities, particularly in support of the Australian Space Agency's Moon to Mars initiative. Please feel free to contact me at jason.dowling at csro.au for further information or for introductions um, to anyone 
uh, mentioned in this talk. Uh, thank you, and I hope you enjoy the rest of the symposium.